Hello and welcome to an experiment where we sort of see what happens if Salavan Village stays at West Ham or if Big Sam stays or Big Sam joins West Ham. It's a comparison to see who's better at it. So just to begin with, I've simulated to the 16th of December. This is the start point at the season. It's the exact same season to this point because this is the actual day Billich gets sacked. So if we head in here now, see West Brom, see how we're getting on at the minute. West Brom are currently 20th in the league, not great, but Billich is still here anyway, so, yeah, so we'll see how to get on at the minute. Schedule wise, to begin with, they've won one, two matches, and three, another two. So I think that's eight points so far. They're bottom of the league, and eight points. Wolves are a nine, and they're not actually that far off relegation or surviving. So this is the start point, this is where we begin. It is a match against Newcastle, but as I say, basically what will happen here is I'll let Billich, I'll just simulate the end of the season with Billich in charge, and I'll put Big Sam in using the editor at this date and see how he does. I have actually done them both, I haven't looked at them, and they both do stay at the end of the season, so it is a fair enough comparison. But just the way they're here, they're out of the QR by a cup as well, so that doesn't affect things. There is actually a scoring system I have devised at the end of it, that'll all come clear, so... We'll see how we get on here now. We'll just we'll begin here now by looking at how Village does at the end of the season. This is to see if a Village stays at the end of the season. So we'll go look at West Brom here now. They're 18th, so they're they relegated. That doesn't really help. I've just simulated forward to the first of June. So I'll have the come eighteenth that just about went. Sorry, I've just sort of been took off there, but Southampton and Brighton both went there. But uh, I looked a bit tight enough for relegation fight, actually. But they've went down 31, Villa 34, stayed up. So we're still in it the last game of the season. We'll see how it get on towards the end. But the match, that Newcastle match was the first one. They actually sort of started going on a bit of form. So they did. Kay Edwards started scoring anyway. So he did. He's a winger. Fair enough. He started firing. Gallagher started firing as well. But there's another block here in February they lost everything. Then March was a good month, but they went out in the fourth round of the FA Cup, so wasn't too good there. And finished 18th in the league. So as I say, not overly great. Paulus must have what, what did Crystal Paulus win? He must have won something. Me, Paulus won the FA Cup. Fair play though. I don't know penalties to <laughs> Jeez, you put everybody were less there. Two one up, say on Chris sent off, and then Bashway scores in the eightieth minute, and Leicester, or Leicester miss a load of penalties, and Villa score theirs. Or not Villa, sorry, Crystal Palace score theirs. But uh, West Brom relegated twenty three defeats, maybe didn't help them. But uh, we'll go through the stats here, just see how we get on. Average rating, Sam Fields didn't play a big lot, but that's it. The most regular player who done well was Sayers, Pereira, and Ayaj. Ajaji, sorry if more than his name already, like, but sure. Uh, he sent the back doing alright. Most appearances was Carolyn Grant. Most goals was Callum Robinson. Robinson Grant. Um, I take it Charlie Austin scored them for somebody else. But, <laughs> you went out alone down that big egg, that's fair play though. But, uh, yeah, it's Edward Sayers and H Higelzi, who's out on loan, so that worked out well. And, Sayers had the most assists. Sam Johnson, the goalkeeper, had most Manila matches. So that's I'm actually surprised Billich stayed and stayed in the job. To be honest with you, I wonder how they bounced up and down the table. See it, see that here. They were bottom for an age. Then they did put a bit of form together. So, uh that's hard luck. Actually, I suppose they did left towards the end of the season. So we'll see how big Sam got on here now. So well. This here game is the database for Big Sam come in, just to prove he did actually finish. I'll look him up, he's the West Brom manager. Although there's Sam Allardyce play centre back for Brackley too, so. But Sam Allardyce is West Brom monitor and Jesus Christ, they've come bottom. So, they're bottom of the league. <laughs> and 25 points. They're comfortably relegated here now. 
Oh, Team Stone Battle, I think. I think 34 would have kept you up in the after version. This is 37, so Big Sam hasn't done overly well. He got rid of a load of players or something, did I? No, Sam Field is the only player I want. Should really check that in Village's database, but sure. Uh, we'll get a look at the player stats here now. Pereira at the most appearances for Sam Allardyce. Bit unusual, he went with a playmaker, like, but sure. Uh, let's see how it have hers out. It didn't really fire out too well for him, like, but... Pereira had four goals, four assists. Grant had four goals. Pereira, Grant and Sawyers all shared four goals. Ajay had three, along with Raheem Harper and Kyle Edwards and Callum Robinson. So, that seems alright. Who was the... F Connor Townsend was had a lot of goals for the old one, I think. Was it? See, that fella only had a lot of goals. I think it was him. I never realised in the last one he was a left back. Like in terms of assists, Pereira, Dangana, and Sayers had the most assists. After that, Ivanovic had three, and modern players had two. <laughs> but uh, the best ratings were two players out on loan. <laughs> the best rating in the squad was Kyle Edwards and Sayers, but uh, Kyle Edwards didn't play as much as Sayers, so we'll take. So here's Pereira on Darnell Furlong is having the highest ratings. So, they're still bottom. I wonder if they get on any about that in the cup. No, same round. They went out all. But they never even picked up. There's February where Billich got a lack of points there. He was unbeaten in March. Just three there, so. I've never really got a ticket or bottom the whole way through. Nah, that says it all. But, eh. Uh, that's it, it's that there now, like it's... But they're not going to be billets on a better job, but we'll see how far out come the end of the whole lot, so... I'm actually surprised, I'm actually surprised what Big Sam actually stayed in the position, to be honest with you. Given what happened. But, there's a fella in the middle here, lost both teams, so... We'll see, we'll put the results in here now, see how far out I have a table, so... Let's get on with that now, then we'll have a look at what the results come the end of it. We're back here now. This is the final score, and just to explain it, it's pretty comprehensive already, Lack, like, but the site in this number of points would be the starting point. You get one point for every two positions, you get one point for every three, three goals in the goal difference, you get one for each round further than the other guy in the FA Cup, and the QRBI Cup didn't matter since we were out of it already at the beginning, but, and you lost 10 points in a rally unit, so based off this here, it's pretty easy to see how clear things were. Billich starts off with six more points. He's two two positions higher, so he gets an off point with that. Plus four by the goal difference. It's an off point. The cups are the same, so it doesn't even matter. And then they both got rally so they both got minus ten. So Billich ended up with twenty three and Sam Allard ended up with fifteen. So basically what this means is if football managers accurate to real life, West Brown are basically fucked and they've made a mistake. But that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I might do more elite experiments depending on what way this, this one goes, so thanks for watching, goodbye, good luck, and I wish you well.